Welcome friends to my second video. My name is Scott Blackhurst or for my Instagram friends flying high again. The fly I'm going to tie for you today is the Mackey Special. This fly originated here in Mackey, Idaho for the Big Lost River and my stepdad had me learn how to tie flies just for this fly here. This is supposed to represent a crane fly. And he got tired of always having to drive up to Mackey, Idaho to buy more flies when he lost them all in the tree. So, this fly is tied with horsehair, embroidery floss, and a saddle hackle. You can tie it in many sizes. The size I prefer is a size 10 dry fly hook. So let me pan out here and we'll get started. So the hook I'm using is a Mustad RS50 94840 in size 10 and it is a dry fly hook. The one thing you want to make sure you do is to set your vise to hold this hook very securely because you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on it during this tie. The embroidery floss that I'll be using is a six strand and you want to break that into two strands so you can get three flies out of each cut. Now depending on the length of hook you use you want, uh, want to make sure that uh, you cut enough floss to uh, make sure that you don't run out during the tie. The thread I'm going to use is a Unithread 70 denier. And it's just a little thicker, a little stronger. As you'll find when you tie this that a lot of the times you'll end up breaking your thread anyway even with the thicker thread just because you're putting so much pressure on it. So we'll tie it in to about halfway. Cut off the tag end. And here I'll tie in the two strand floss. And tie it in and then get it worked to the bottom and tie this in all the way along here on the bottom of the hook and then I tie it in to about the barb. Next I'm going to use a strung rooster saddle on this in a tan as this is going to be a tan Mackie special. And so on your on your saddles, it can be it can be long fibers. It can be kind of your bad hackles that you wouldn't use for a different pattern because you're going to cover up most of this saddle with the horse hair. Just tie that in. Now the horse hair, you want to make sure I like to, to tie in at least have the length 12 inches. The longer is always better. And tie that in. I usually get that in either on my side of the fly or on top. Wrap that forward to where a normal thorax area is going to be. The trick with this fly is you do not want to crowd the eye of the hook. And you'll see why here in a minute. But 
tie in, tie up, and I put in a few half hitches. That just kind of helps make the fly a little stronger. Remember when I was a kid, I caught about 105 fish on a, on this fly, on a single fly, before I lost it across the river in a tree. But you know, you'll take your hackle, wrap that forward, touching turns if you want. Uh, help build the body up a little bit and just get uh, as many hackles on there as you can or fibers wrap that up and tie that off and just break off the waist piece. Now I usually come in, throw in another couple of half hitches. Now you're going to take that bundle of horse hair and just do a half wrap to the side away from you. And you'll want to horse hair in your right hand, the floss in your left. What you're going to do is take that floss, wrap it clockwise around the horsehair, and then make a wrap with the horsehair. Then your floss is going to end up in your left hand, and you're just going to repeat that pattern all the way up. Starting in your left, go around one turn clockwise back to your left. And then I kind of wiggle the bundle of horsehair through the, the hackle so you don't uh, tie it all down. And just repeat that pattern all the way up. So very important that you don't get too close to the eye of the hook. I'd say you want at least two, two and a half eye lengths away from the eye. And you stop, bundle the floss and the horse hair together and take several wraps of thread around. Cut off the extra floss, make a couple of more turns, and then you want to do a loop of your horse hair. You can make it any length you want. I usually just take it up so it's longer than the fibers of the hackle on top. And just start tying in loop after loop. You hear I'm already down to the eye of the hook. So try to make some wraps back if you need. Sometimes you can push that back a little bit with your thumbnail. And I usually try to use the rest of the the horse hair uh, to make your your loops here and we're just gonna create a wing sometimes your horse cell will get wound up and in your thread and just get that pulled out and 
And again, that's why it's important not to crowd the head of the hook on this fly. So we'll create one more loop here, make sure we don't lose our string. Then take that last pull back, tie that in, and create your head of your fly. So here, hopefully the camera's picking up the the fibers of the hackle that I've captured there. And what I've learned in the world of fly tying is lighter is your friend. But we'll come in here, cover everything up, and then just burn those fibers away. And it's a lot easier than trying to cut it off with your scissors. So now I'm going to take all those that or take that loop bundle and pull that up, come in, and make some wraps behind it. So we want that that wing to stand straight up. And when we get done tying that in, well, we're going to take our scissors and cut those loops and make all those horsehair strands single so we got that standing up now so now I'm gonna take these extra the, the longer fibers that are left over and I'm gonna cut those to the the length of the the loops now these fibers I can take and I can make antenna out of those for other fly patterns make a couple of more wraps here now I found that it's easier just to do your whip finish by hand instead of trying to get in there with the whip finisher but whatever works for you three or four wraps there tighten it down and I do several sets here of this whip finish right behind the wing. You can get that cinch down and then you can just break that thread off. Now we can come in with our scissors and cut all those loops that we created. And then what I do, so you got quite a mess here on top. Nothing's really even. Doesn't really need to be even, but I make it even. And come in, do a barber clip. And then just take those strands and pull them out and around and make it kind of in a fan pattern. And what we'll do is I'll take our bobkin and come in and pull any of the saddle hackle out that is caught down and just kind of making loops there well, as you can see this pattern is quite buggy and it's supposed to represent the crane fly orange belly you can make any color you want. This I, I, I made this one orange and that's what works here on the Big Lost. So I, I keep the wing a little long for now. You can always cut it down when you get to the river. Also if you're fishing it it's not doing anything for you. You can change how it acts in the water by taking a lighter and take the, the ends and singe them and then just kind of leave that burnt area on top. 
And again, you, you want to do this, just don't go in there and light it or, or you could just burn the whole thing off. But that is the Mackey Special, originating out of Mackey, Idaho for the Big Lost River. And thanks for watching. You're welcome to leave any comments on, on any patterns you'd like to see. Anything I can approve on. Thanks for watching.